Hello, I'm Corey Gilbert, owner of P3 MediaWorks. And I'm Jessica Dare, artistic director of Chicago Dance so, Crash. Dance Crash and P3 MediaWorks are kindred spirits. That's how I always like to start the story. When you go see one of their shows, you feel like you're seeing a play or a movie built in to dance. And so being a filmmaker and being a storyteller myself, um, that further connects me with um, Dance Crash and who they are and who P3 MediaWorks is. I don't want to give away too much because some of it you're supposed to figure out as it goes. But in its most basic sense, we follow a series of different characters going about their normal life that there was something sort of like blowing through town that was affecting these people in certain ways. They all end up meeting along the way of this new journey that their life goes on and then from there they, um, they start to recognize that even though they're, they're very different people and they exist in very different lives, they have this one thing in, in common. But um, I think the interesting thing about the styles of dance that we use in this has to do with how Crash is. We're a multidisciplinary company, so our dancers are trained in crump, uh, capoeira, hip-hop, modern, contemporary, jazz, so we're able to kind of um, we wanted each of these characters to really be in their own world and be different people and sort of have the viewer not sure how they come together. Corey had this stuff that we've never even heard of before, the drone, well drones of course you've heard of, but the Ronin, um, this sort of like steady cam that can be on a point where you can then suddenly like run with it. And so that gave us the ability to sort of make some of these elements characters in the story, like this one specific camera shot or point of view is a character in the story. We really wanted it to have this intentional fluidity, if that's a word, mm -hmm. from dance to acting, but it's still very tangible, right? It wasn't dreamscapey, or um, at least for me, I didn't get lost in the narrative. I think there's a very strong narrative, but also in this very um, fantastical type of world. Yeah. And I think that's what makes it cool tried to sort of come up with a middle ground that could get the best of the way I wanted my dancers to be shown and also the best of, um, you know, the production value and the knowledge they have of how films work and how you get an audience invested. So we kind of tried to create our own beast. Mm -hmm. We always try to say our goal is, is that um, a seasoned dance critic or dance viewer will like the performance or the show or the film that we're doing and so will someone off the street who's literally never seen dance before. We wanted every single moment to be something that like kept you enthralled the whole time. And that was really interesting in kind of how we picked um, the locations, right? Mm -hmm. Like we, we really went in and found some cool spots in Chicago. And every story had its own separate narrative. So there's a condo, there's an office building, there's, um, there's a log cabin in the middle of the woods. There was a club, there was a nightclub, right? We utilized the Damon Silos, um, which is an amazing location that's been used in every, films from the Transformers down to small films like ours, right? That was the craziest you know, location we had. And like, we're, we're not afraid to get our hands dirty. So it was like, literally we'd pick the location and swipe away some empty beer cans. And then like Casey, we're just gonna shove you through this opening in the wall here. Like we really just made up that choreography to match that location because it was so dope. For Dance Crash to go and make a dance film was just a natural evolution of who you guys yeah. are. Yeah, we always joke that Dance Crash looks good on film, you know? Like we just have like a sort of athletic dynamic style and we specifically choose dancers that look different from each other, that aren't cookie cutters, that um, I don't know, all have their own unique thing. So that lended itself really nicely to this project. You guys took who you were as a dance company and said, let's keep it who we are in this film, right? And I think that's going to be um, what your audience is going to love about it because they love who you guys are and you stayed true to that in the film. Um, but then like you said, like a new person that's never heard of modern dance or maybe heard of Dance Crash specifically can come into a show like End of Line, mm -hmm. right? Or watch this film and go, oh yeah, this company's cool. Mm -hmm. How'd your first walk through go? Pretty well. Yeah? Pretty well. I've been nailing it every time. <laughs> Cut that first part out. Wait, you've been what? Yeah. Well, Caitlin um, was right in there with us for the whole process. She was part of the creative team. So from the get-go, when we were deciding exactly what kind of story we were going to do, she helped us craft that. And Caitlin is such an awesome performer. She was actually our first shot that we did. What was a solo sort of started turning into what felt like a duet, she said, because she was actually working with the camera guy who on the spot we were figuring out what angles and what circular patterns were gonna work best to show the choreography that Caitlin and I had come up with. And I remember we were all like, well, this is gonna be really easy, you know, cause she, um, she had a really nice, uh, very moving, well done 
organic solo and I think it's going to be a really nice um, heartfelt moment to kind of break up the formula of the film. So I hear you had to change the choreo, right? Yep, the whole thing. All of it? All of it. All the choreo. It's all different, right? Out yeah. the door. Yeah. Jessica, what happened? Just redid all the choreography based uh -huh. on our site-specific environment here. And I actually like it better than what we set originally. So Serendipity. These there we go. For a reason. Excellent. And look yeah. at Brian's hair again. He's just such a Beyonce ninja, you know? Okay, Kung is amazing. Kung is our ninja. He has actually has more of a trickster background than he does a dance background because we were just having him jump and flip and twist off pretty much anything that was around. And Kung looks great on camera. And his first day with us, all we had him do was like run as fast as he could and kind of slide and stop and look behind him and then go. And the first time he did it, the whole crew was like, oh. Go come. Wow. Nice. That was oh, <laughs> Brian, how do you feel about today? <laughs> great. Yeah? Yeah. First time dancing. I really on... nailed that elevator. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that was actually it's great. That's a very important shot. Oh, sweet. An, you, See? Your performance was awesome. <laughs> there you go. Oh, yeah, yeah, his performance was the best so far. Yeah. Academy Award. <laughs> I'm a thespian. So we right. juxt that with Brian Humphreys, who is actually our resident, um, I would say, more releasey modern technique dancer. He's also a really accomplished natural actor. Um, and has really good instincts and choices. And so it was really nice to work with him because we actually filmed Brian Kung's scenes first. And then Brian sort of had to play off, play off of those scenes knowing that he had a very different motivation. Actually, his character had a, a lack of motivation. So Brian did a really good job not only matching the timing of the choreography that I had set on Kung in location just a couple days ago, but also sort of like giving it a very real human behind it, I think. Uh, seven, eight, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, and five, six, and seven, and eight. Push one, two, three, four. Some kind of trick goes right here. Right. Gosh. And then Shan was one of my favorite pieces to set. Um, Shan is a really technical ballet dancer who's amazing at contemporary. She also has incredible gymnastic skills. Sort of did. A contempt, an acro contemporary rageful solo, and Shan knocked it out of the park. I think the day we shot it, it was already September. It was evening in Chicago. There was some cold snap. We're all freezing, and Shan's out there in a crop top, and she just nailed that. And she just did this whole number down the the entire hundred feet of the catwalk, and then behind her, the whole time is this amazing, beautiful collage of murals of like street art um, that you know played off of the emotion that we were evoking in her character's moment mm -hmm. was perfect. You're filming right now. <laughs> Sorry. Rich, is this your choreo? It is my choreography. Yeah. I choreographed the tutting on the couch and the stuff right there. And then we staged it kind of together based on the kitchen. So Rich Ashworth is sort of our resident hip hop guru. And so we thought who better to come into the scene that we wanted to have a little bit more funk to it. Um, so Rich actually choreographed that number and uh, him and Monica sort of carry on their domestic abilities um, without missing a beat, even though he's gotten this message and he's kind of trying to get his evening chores done and kind of get out of there. So it was uh, kind of a cute dynamic between the two of them of appreciating each other and kind of going about their bopping about their daily routine. Wow, well, you, you guys rehearsed that? That was real life. <laughs> so Monica, I think, exudes rays of warm light. Like She's just the most positive, bubblegum, amazing person to work with. She remembers everything the second you give it to her. And most importantly, and what kind of tied into her character well, is she's super clean. And she kind of, when you watch her dance, she seems like, I'd be friends with this person, or this person lives next door to me, or I think I saw them at the mall. She's just like that really accessible, kind of enjoyable person to watch. Um, so that worked out well because it's sort of literally the female counterpart to the way that Rich Ashworth comes off on stage. So they were such a cute couple together. Yeah, their, their chemistry was obvious, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, if you, told, if you told the audience like they were married in real life, you wouldn't, you'd yeah. believe it, you, 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 would, you would believe it for sure. Mm -hmm. That was one of our easiest days. I would think the only thing we had to worry about was Rich sweating through his shirt because we made them do that number all evening. But um, they did a great job. They were awesome. So how are you feeling, Legend? I feel great. Yeah? Um, When's the last time you ran that much? 
maybe about 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> How them old knees holding up? They're holding. They're holding David has done pro a ton of video work. Um, so he was really easy to work with. David's a nat not only is he an, a natural actor, but he's also now done a lot of it through Crash and outside of Crash. So <laughs> David's natural movement would be something that you call crump. <laughs> it's uh, sort of an offshoot of hip hop. Mm -hmm. Which I think was very appropriate. Yeah, his is probably the more like showy of all the pieces that we do. Like he's literally up on stage intentionally showing off to a live audience. Where David's dance actually became the literal part of mm -hmm. his narrative. Like he got the guts to like get up on stage, you know? So he used to be the shy guy and now he's not afraid to go up and, and improv dance in yeah. front of like 500 people. So it's interesting that, that that dynamic that we created there where we took the dancing number for him became a very literal moment in his narrative. Mm -hmm. The opposite of everybody else's dance in their moments. Mm -hmm. That was neat. Good morning, Casey Beavis here, reporting from 99.8. How do you feel today, Corey? Excellent, feeling good. What up? Feeling good, all right. We're on the set with uh, Chicago Dance Crash and the crew filming our next film. P3 Media Works. P3 Media um, <laughs> Who has the mic here? I don't know. Corey keeps singing over, so why don't you just take over here, Corey? I do, I talk in front of everybody. Action! <laughs> Casey, we sort of designated as um, our source monkey. <laughs> She's the first person that gets the message and sort of takes off from there. And uh, she was an interesting character, I would say, to, to assign because Casey can sometimes be our resident hip hop girl, she can be our contemporary girl, she's got a really strong gymnastics background, so we sort of had to pick and choose how we wanted to feature her. She ended up being the one that got tossed around the most. Um, and that's also because Casey learns material really quickly. And then what we ended up doing was having her do this traveling assisted duet with Marco. And um, they did a really great job with some pretty tricky lifts and also um, not really being able to practice the full run of it all the way through until they were on location. How are you feeling so far about it? Good. I love Have you had many close-up shots or has it all been this sort of like wide angle stuff? I've had a few close Me and Casey did stuff in the, in the park. In the boulevard, the, right. Like, moving duet, uh -huh. which is the, how I got introduced to this project. Like that's what was shown to me. And I nice. was like immediately sold. I was like, okay, yeah, like this. Lovely. <laughs> awesome. It's fun. I'm not sure if Marco knew what he was in for when he signed on to this, but he was very eager and he was a pleasure to work with and he just kind of rolled with the punches. But it was actually his first time doing anything with the company and we're kind of known for being uh, a little bit more rough around the edges. We're a little bit more rough and tumble than your standard company. He really got in there and he, he got grounded and found his deep plie and did a lot of partnering and, and rolled around in some dirt and tossed people everywhere. So he was awesome to work with. Marco looks great on camera too. The camera loves Marco. <laughs> he, was, and he, he was very good at the what we like to call our pedestrian moments. Uh -huh. He probably experienced being overextended more than anyone. Mm -hmm. I think your dancers know who you guys are and mm -hmm. they've been in the company for a while so they're used to like uh, exposed to I guess you know breaking some rules and getting overextended right? Yeah. Which is probably what probably what I assume they like about the company. Yeah. But when you're new to the company and you're going out to do some crazy things that Dance Crash likes to do in terms of choreography yeah. and then add it to being on film and then add it to being uh, in a cellar underneath a grain yeah. silo. I think, it, no... I think Marco experienced the most overextension, but he was so gracious. Yeah. There's no company warm up. <laughs>